points. When looking at technology and national security, well, the facet of the problem that I'm looking at is connectivity. And when you look at the population of the world right now, I think we're at about 7.7, 7.8 billion people. Right now, connected, we have about 4 billion-ish people in the world connected to the internet today. So again, 7.7, 7.8 people on planet Earth, and about 4 billion are connected to the internet in some way, shape, or form. By my calculations, by the year 2026, that number is going to look more like 7 billion. So think about that. Three more billion people are going to be connected to the internet in about five years, give or take. So how are we as the U.S. government and the U.S. intelligence community going to be postured, whether it's through human capital, technology, et cetera, in order to digest, synthesize, and understand that exponential increase in data? China has approximately one million people, one million with an M, dedicated to cyber information operations, et cetera. We're never going to be able to beat them with numbers of humans. We know that. So we're going to beat them with technology. We're going to beat them with our brains, smarter, not harder. The automated process by which we compute that information is absolutely vital to ensuring our competitive and strategic advantage is maintained in the geopolitical space for the next 50 to 100 years because that new increase in data will allow the nation which is able to understand it to have predictive human economic predictive capability. Okay, so just let that sink in. If we fail to do so, then we will hit a disadvantage for the next 50 to 100 years and maybe even further. So that, that is what keeps me up at night. How are we gonna solve that problem? So you all touched on the different angles of how China is a threat to the United States, whether it's technologically, whether it's with the virus in other ways. Um, clearly, you know, we might not be in a conventional sense war with China, but we are in competition with them at the very least. Um, however, I will say that there is another threat that we are facing at home, and whether you know China has a direct influence or not in this, I think a lot of people in this room can relate to deplatformed or censorship. And uh, so, now I'm going to put this question to you, coming from a legal background: Where do you see the line of free speech, being able to say what you want, and people being able to say no? That's a that's a threat. That's a security threat. You cannot say that. Yeah. Well. The law is not keeping up with technology. Is, is fundamentally the issue, and you know, while the Supreme Court, I think, is uh, much better balanced now than it was uh, in previous to handle these issues, uh, there is still uh, the ubiquitous nature of social media and the ability uh, to for them to, while not being government actors, to essentially, as we've seen, coordinate with government actors to deplatform to silence messages that are disagreed with by whoever's in power, and I think that's an incredibly dangerous environment because we need more ideas. This country was found on the a marketplace of ideas, and, 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 and if we become a place of censorship either by non-governmental actors or those in collusion with the government, I think that we all lose out. But we also, uh, as conservatives, as Christians, as believers, we need to make sure that we're, you know, we are very careful with how we use these technologies and make sure that when we give our, our private information uh, to these companies, that we know who we're giving it to. And when we give money to these companies, we know who we're giving that money to. And so if you're running Facebook ads and giving Mark Zuckerberg uh, money and profit, uh, he, he's probably not using that in your best interest uh, and to, a, to, a, to a direction that you want to use it. So uh, I, I say all of that to say this. The law has not kept up with social media and, 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 and the marketplace of ideas. And I think we're going to see some revolutionary uh, advances in the law. And there's going to have to be through Congress passing laws, reigning in, whether it's Section 230 immunity or whether it's just applying free speech to these platforms that look pretty much like the, the modern day uh, town square. Uh, we're going to have to expand our ability to speak freely and to express our deeply held beliefs um, on, on some of these platforms if they're going to be ubiquitous in our lives. Frank, go ahead. Yeah, um, a couple of thoughts. Uh, to your point, uh, we've got a situation at the moment where we're watching businesses doing restraints on freedom of speech at the direct behest of the government. And that seems to me to be a perfect example of the law not keeping up. That's a First Amendment violation, it seems to me, and it needs to be litigated or legislated to, as such. But just a related point, um, back to China, uh, 
I also am vice chairman of something we call the Committee on the Present Danger of China and been very, very concerned about both what the Chinese have done to perfect some of these AI and predictive technologies and to use a whole array of surveillance and quantum computing and other techniques to create something they call the social credit system. And we were talking a little bit about it outside. Uh, what is being done now by the Chinese is literally aggregating all aspects of the data that is available to their system about their own citizens to control them in a way that is um, far more frightening than anything Orwell was able to conjure in his time. Um, and it's happening now. To wit, what people say, what people write, who they interact with, where they are, what they do, is all monitored in real time throughout the Chinese empire. And I say empire because what is now happening is they are beginning to export this social credit system globally. Part of it is through what they've been creating, and I think the previous panel talked a little bit about this, uh, with the global infrastructure. They call their Belt and Road Initiative. Huawei is a key piece of it, but not the only piece. When you put all that together, and then you add